Welcome to Advocates for Change, a show that shines a spotlight on individuals and movements making a real impact, not just in our community, but sometimes in the world. I'm Carolyn Orzak Schoenberger, your host for this empowering journey. The mission of the show is to inspire change, to share stories that resonate with the heart, and they certainly will tonight. Resonate with the heart, stories of courage, resilience, and innovation. Advocates for Change is not just a cable TV show. It's a platform for voices that need to be heard, for ideas that need to be explored, and for actions that demand our attention. I'm the executive director of the Schoenberger Public Interest Law Foundation. Our work is to assist our clients and other nonprofits achieve their missions. Prior to creating my foundation, I served as the Commissioner of Consumer Services for the City of Chicago for 15 years, as a Cook County Assistant State's Attorney, as a faculty member of the Business Department at Harold Washington College, and as the Supervising Attorney for the Immigration Program at the Chicago Legal Clinic. Also, I volunteered organizations such as the Chicago Volunteer Legal Services, a great organization. As we dive into today's episode, we encourage you to join the media, share your thoughts, ideas, and stories of change happening in your communities. Together, we can amplify the voices and make a difference. So I'm very honored today to introduce a friend and a longtime star in the Chicago area, Dr. Sandy Goldberg of a Silver Lining Foundation. Welcome. Well, if I'm a star, you certainly are a star. <laughs> Hi there, Carolyn. Hi. So I'm going to ask Dr. Goldberg or Dr. Sandy. Could you call me Sandy? Of course I can call you Thank Sandy. Thank you, Carolyn. To <laughs> talk a little bit, not a little bit, a lot about a Silver Lining Foundation, which I think is ingenious, particularly the by mam a mammogram program. That is so brilliant. So please tell us, Sandy, Thank what, you, Kelly. tell us about a Silver Lining Foundation. You're, the, you're a co-founder and the executive director. Correct, correct. Well, hello everybody, and you are now going to learn about our baby, a Silver Lining Foundation. My husband and I started it in 2002 as a result of my being diagnosed with breast cancer and coming to the realization that I, who had great insurance and great support, was in the, really in the minority. And that, that really shocked me tremendously. And how did I learn that we were in the minority? Interestingly enough, and I think you know the story, Carolyn, it was through a cable show that I did at Can TV. At a show, I was interviewing experts in the field of cancer after my diagnosis. I, I, was the mod, I was the moderator, I was the host, that was whatever it was needed to be done. And people could call in with their questions and their concerns. And the number of calls outpaced the length of the show. So I would call people back. And what I discovered, and you know the story very well, Carolyn, was that I discovered that people felt they weren't worthy because they had no insurance and they had no money. And that made me sick. So my husband and I started our kitchen table in a Silver Lining Foundation at our kitchen table in 2002. We started our breast health testing program by a mom, a mammogram, an integral part of the foundation in 2006. And we are rolling along, funding almost over 30,000 women and men with access to cost-free breast health testing. At, at now 17 partner hospitals. We fund those who are un uninsured, who are underinsured, and we see more and more of that now. Higher deductibles, higher co-pays, specific tests not being covered. We fund those without documentation. We fund immigrants, and we found those who have escaped to this country, literally many times, as you know, with the clothes on their backs, as refugees. What would you like me to talk about now, well, Carolyn? I could go on and on and on. And on. Uh, but I want that. you to go on. I, actually, let's start with buy mom a mammogram because this is ingenious. It, it is. So well, that's cool. Yes, tell us about buy mom a mammogram and and how is it the hospitals want to join a silver lining as as a partner? 
When we started at a silver lining, or when we started a silver lining foundation, our, our goal, frankly, was not to replicate information, but to act as a clearinghouse for information as it related to cancer, particularly to breast cancer. And one day I woke up and I said to my husband, you know, we're doing really great stuff here, but what we need to do is be on the front line in terms of funding access to breast health testing. And that is when we decided we were going to start a program which we called Buy a Mom a Mammogram. Our first partner hospital, and to this day, actually the template, um, is the University of Illinois UI Health. And the first year we funded 95 screening mammograms. Then we talked and said, well, we're doing a nice job on funding screening mammograms. What about people who need follow-up care? So then we started funding follow-up breast health testing. So now we fund the screening mammograms. For those of you who know, that's the walk in the door, you know, the, the, food, the bottom of the food chain, and hopefully the end of the food chain where breast health mm -hmm. testing for you is concerned. But if there are anomalies, if there's something that looks a little bit uh, not so, we also go up the food chain by funding diagnostic mammograms, ultrasounds, breast MRIs, and biopsies. And the beauty of what we do at Silver Lining Foundation is the fact that all these tests are free. No one that comes to us for help pays one dime. And if, heaven forbid, someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, and our numbers are roughly five times the national average, thanks to our partner hospitals who are so vigorously and emotionally engaged with our program, those individuals who are diagnosed are put into funded programs and they are taken care of for free. And that is the important thing. So part of the ingenious part of this is th the cost that you that I as a donor can buy mom a mammogram. Right. And why is it the hospitals are so eager to be part of this? Well, I, I really feel that, that medical centers and, and uh, their administration are, are, first of all, they're people and they care and they hear stories and they know what's going on. But it is very, very difficult, as you know, with everything in this world now, Ka Carolyn, is what does something cost? Well, what we do is that we alleviate the concerns of the institutions about what it is going to cost because we reimburse, we have negotiated rates, we reimburse every single hospital every single month in full. And I don't think many places can say that. So I'm sure it's a combination of caring spirits, wanting to help people, and knowing, you know, that no, you won't have to wait a year to get paid. And that, that matters. And also, what I, what I must say is that although we have requests from many, many hospitals, we are extremely particular about those hospitals that do indeed become a Silver Lining Foundation partner hospitals in our Biomama Mammogram program. And why is that? It is those intangibles that are so important. How are you going to be treated when you walk in the door? Is somebody going to talk to you? Or are you just considered to be a number? Are you asked when you make your appointment? And that is something else that's unique about us. We send out a service voucher to each person that reaches out to us for help. They connect directly with their hospital of choice, usually in the demographic area in which they live and they make the appointment. They are not told to be somewhere at a specific time. You know, we people work, they have children, they have obligations. So we want people to be able to go, but they have to be able to go when they can go. That's really the issue. So if we ask people there, join us, join with this program, how much does it cost for someone to buy mom a mammogram? Well, you know, again, we go back to negotiated rates. You know, we reimburse our partner hospitals and everything that we do is based on donations, mm -hmm. you know, certainly from, from individuals, from, or, from organizations, from corporations. It costs a Silver Lining Foundation $135. So for $135, you can give someone a chance and God forbid they have breast cancer, they don't, they don't have to worry. They don't have to worry. You know, I think, Carolyn, and, and it's one thing that we don't think about as much as I think we should in terms of those people who reach up to, out to us. 
Somebody has to call a stranger for help? Think about the desperation that's involved in having to call someone you never met before. And that is why it's so important. I, I must say that we have, without a doubt, the best, most caring team that there is. They are amazing. And English and English Spanish. and Spanish. And then also our service vouchers that we send out are, are English, Spanish, Polish, and Arabic. And also our partner hospitals either have interpreters live on site or else they have that wonderful interpretation program that's out there now via technology that's, I think it's, I don't know how many zillions of languages. So at least there is the ability to be able to communicate. And that's so important. Yeah. And yeah. so important. And I know that people sometimes culturally are afraid to ask or afraid to talk about it, right. but in their own language and in a welcoming environment, I think it's a whole lot easier. Um, so again, for 135 bucks, you can save someone's life. It's a combination of saving lives, but also, and I'm glad you brought that up, Carolyn. I'm falling off this chair for some reason here. So if I slide under the desk, it's been nice <laughs> knowing you, you up. Um, we talk about saving lives, you know, just as Carolyn did now. But there's also the aspect of easing lives. How scared are people who can't get access to a test in which they may hear the word cancer? Probably the best part of my job, then people call the office and we all answer the phones, you know, we're a small team. And I'll hear, Dr. Sandy, I had my mammogram and I'm okay. I'm okay. How liberating is that? Absolutely. How liberating is that? That's really what it's all about. And what we endeavor to do, and I think we do a very good job of it, playing field is leveled. I don't care who you are. I don't care. I care that you can get a test that can potentially save your life if that is identified as being needed additional testing. That is what I care about. So a couple times a year, there are some great events. Yes, indeed there are. And, and October 5th yes. is one of them. Yes. What is going on on October 5th? And you will be joining us, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. Of course. October 5th is the Silver Lining Foundation's A Sterling Event Gala. And this year, it is our 20th gala. Oh my goodness. The event is underwritten. It is at the Hyatt McCormick Place. They do a fabulous job. It's been there. This is their tw our 20th year with them. And it's a fabulous event. It is completely underwritten. So every single dime raised goes directly to the programs of a Silver Lining Foundation, in particular, our breast health testing program. It's a, it's a great night. I mean, we have a, a wonderful band, a live auction, a silent auction. The food goes on and we on We get and to on. dance. Yes, dance. Dancing. Are you going to tell the story about my conga line? Uh, Carolyn never forgets that. One memorable year, I somehow ended up, well, I figured I could, uh, leading an 80-person conga line through the ballroom of the Hyatt McCormick place, which shows you that we are probably the most ungala gala, wouldn't you say? Well, it's certainly more interesting than many others. <laughs> <laughs> She's so much more polite than I am. It was it was a heck of an evening. It was well, it's a, it always is. Yeah, it, it is. always is a, oh. a, a great evening, and so it's October fifth. Yes, and. If you go to your website, if right. anyone was interested in attending or right. can you still get tickets? Or? Um, we never turn anyone down. We can always, I, I always say we can always stay at a table. If you go to our website, a silver lining foundation, all one word, dot org. When you do, you'll see there's a banner, gala. Got wine glasses on there and everything. Looks very pretty. Click on the gala. Click on that banner, rather, and that will take you directly to purchase tickets. And if you cannot attend, to make a donation as well. Can people make donations in kind, like play tickets or uh, tickets, something for a meals at a Absolutely. restaurant? Absolutely. Um, we have one of the reasons that our 
event is as successful as it is, is through the support of what we call in-kind donations of people who may have a connection at a, at a, a eating establishment or, or, and say, I can give you a gift card or I can provide such and such. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a very eager audience, as you know, in attendees oh, yes. in terms of our silent and our live auctions and our paddle raise and our donations. And I, the items, I, I love silent auctions. I just happen to love them, you know, and there's nothing better than, oh, I was thinking about doing this, now I'll do it. And do you know what we have on our live auction? And you don't know. No. We have Taylor Swift tickets. Oh my God. Yep, yep, and good seats. 200 level Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift tickets, and they're in Indianapolis, so it's close by. Well, that will definitely be very interesting to see how many people and what they go for at the silent auction. Oh, right. live auction. That'll be at the live auction, and then you and I were discussing on the way over, if anybody is a fan of Jelly Roll, we have tickets for Jelly Roll's uh, performances as, performance as well. We have that. I happen to love him. You know, and many items, everything from um, learning how to make candy to all kinds of marvelous uh, uh, coffee table books to a med spa package to jewelry to everything. Oh, it's probably one of the best silent auctions ever. And what that does, you know, support in terms of the silent auction, the live auction, purchasing the tickets, donations, everything, every single dime goes to support our programs, in particular by a mama mammogram. So that's October 5th. Yes, 630 to 11. At the Hyatt. At the Hyatt McCormick Place on South King Drive. And um, it's a great evening. Full it of is. love, full of support, full of energy. And maybe you'll help me lead a conga line this oh, year, we'll Carolyn. See. <laughs> we'll see. So, um, uh, so we talked about Buy Mama Mammogram. Maybe you can talk a little bit about a couple other programs. Sure. So that everyone who doesn't know a silver lining knows how creative and expansive it is. Well, we try to cover any and all bases regarding certainly the, the disease, you know, the breast cancer. We have an outreach program called the Chicago, resource and outreach program called the Chicago Land Cancer Information Coalition. We have 20 participating organizations of which you may need something um, that we do not cover. We cover testing specifically. We can refer you to do that, you know, that's wonderful. You may need a bra post-procedure. We have Second Act, as an example, who does a marvelous job where that's concerned, and wigs when someone is going through treatment. The American Cancer Society has so many wonderful, really, ideas out there and, and ways in which they can assist and help people that are going through treatment. Uh, and they're nationwide, many of our participating programs. Um, we also have a program that we call Keep Abreast. That had quieted down during pandemic. We're hoping to bring it back and bringing it back in, in other formats now. And what that is, what Keep Abreast is, but it's now we're formatting it a bit differently in terms of public speaking at particular events, is really to talk about breast cancer, to learn how to do a proper breast self-examination, to deal with those questions that people are uncomfortable or afraid to ask, to talk about the myths that are involved, and basically to provide support and information for individuals who other might, wise might not want to get it. I'm going into businesses now. That there are adult women there, and they want to learn. Really, in yes, businesses. In businesses, yes. We've gone into young people. It started off by in young people's groups, in schools, and in, in local organizations there, coming in to talk about dispelling the myths. And particularly with the young people, Carolyn, as you know, in many communities, the young people are the communicators. They're the facilitators, you know, between in their communities and in the, within their families. So having that information is very important. We also have a program, you know, that we call Survive to Thrive. And that basically addresses the unique needs of those people who have gone through the fire and have questions, need additional testing, need some help. You know, we do that. And then, of course, at the University of Illinois Medical Center there, their mammography center there, 
is um, named after my late mother, and it's called the Evelyn Goldberg Mammography Center, and the testing there is done. And when people walk in, there's a picture of my mother. Everyone taps the frame, and they tap the frame so much the frame has to continuously be replaced. Oh my goodness. So this is what we do, and this is how we can help. That's what's important. This is how we can help. Well, it's, it's so innovative information Action, action, yeah. Advocacy, I, I think, so important. And I don't know if people remember when, if you had breast cancer, you didn't talk about it. Yeah, and absolutely. It was a vice president's, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Vice president of the United States, the wife, yeah, who finally came out publicly and said, "It was Happy Rockefeller." I remember when that when she came out public about her breast cancer, and how people were, and you know, you did not talk about no. that. And I remember when I did my segment on NBC News about what I had gone through in terms of really telling my story, how many people reached out because people didn't talk about it before. If anything has improved in terms of life, you know, we can talk about how complex life is now and how difficult it is. Where it has improved is that having a diagnosis such as breast cancer no longer is under a rock. It is discussed. And whatever questions you all might have or anything, please feel free to reach out to us. One way that's easier, you go on our website, A Silver Lining Foundation. You'll see a tab, I want to help. You'll see another tab, I need help. Just enter your message. We get back to you within 24 hours. And usually that's long. Usually it's much quicker than that. So that's a silverliningfoundation.org. Right. And you go there and... Again, there's lots of information, including information on the gala. Yes, indeed. And information, again, for people who want to help and for people who need help. Right. And uh, again, the information is provided in Spanish as well as English. Correct. And Polish, you can get Polish interpreted. Polish Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's incredible. That, um, And this started at your kitchen table back in 2002. Yeah. It started actually in 2000 at our kitchen table. 2000. No, 2002. I'm sorry. That's what's called. I was diagnosed in 2000, you know, 24 years ago, 24 and a half years ago. I remember wow. when we celebrated your 10, yeah. 10 year. Yeah. And you know, this April, this coming April, it's going to be 25 years. That's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is, it is because of good care and good support. And this for us is what we want for every single individual out there. Treatment access to care with dignity and respect. That is what life should be about, and that is what we do provide. So I think there was a fear that maybe it was catching, that you didn't want to talk about it, that it was catching. I, I'll just never forget that suddenly, mm -hmm. little by little, and, and in other medical areas too, sure, suddenly sure. you can talk about things yeah. that you weren't talking about. But I don't know of any other program that is like this, dealing with breast care and um, again, a silverliningfoundation.org is where you get the information. Right. And how, what hospitals? We didn't talk about, and I know we only have a few more minutes, but maybe talk about some of the hospitals. Well, what we do is that we have hospitals within the city of Chicago. We have them in, in the suburbs. We also have them in Rockford. I mean, we have hospitals in, in Elgin, as an example, you know, which is you know, quite important. In Evanston, um, I, I always, and I always forget one of the hospitals, and I apologize. We have four hospitals that are under the Advocate Health System. We have hospitals under the Ascension Health System. We have Swedish Hospital, the University of Illinois. A South Shore, a Trinity, we, it just goes on and on. St. Anthony, Mount Sinai, see all the, and this is the beauty of it, is that we now have so many partner hospitals that I have to go through them in my mind to be able to share. And when you go on our website, there is a listing of all of our partner hospitals who are remarkable in their commitment to our mission. And they will be at the gala. There'll be oh, lots yes, of they people will. at the gala. Right, so, so you have a chance to meet everybody. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And, we, and, you know, it's it's fun. It is fun. And it's fun to be able, you have fun, 
But the underlying cause is to make sure that people are treated and get treatment the way they deserve. That is the beauty of what we do. My mother always used to say we are all family and we have to help each other through the tough times. Tough times abound in today's world. But in this area, we can help and the time does not have to be tough. You can depend on us. And with dignity yeah. and preserving the dignity of, of people. And right. So it's something. So you have the gala in the fall, and what are one or two other fundraisers that people maybe can think well, about? Well, on March the 7th, 2025, we will have our 10th annual Glitz and Glamour fashion show. And, and what is that? That is absolutely, it is Chicago designer specifically. With Chicago, either celebrities, we're going to do something a little bit different now this year, this coming year. I'm not going to share what it is. Mm -hmm. And of course, we get my husband to walk down the runway with me. And that is? That is an experience in and of itself. And again, the event is completely underwritten. So every single dime that is raised goes again to support the programs of a Silver Lining Foundation. And we have multiple other smaller events throughout the year. Please go on our website. There's a list of events there. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about this. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you, uh, thank you for watching. Um, for each show, I've had the privilege of bringing you incredible stories of I'm not going to say Sandy Goldberg is ordinary, of extraordinary people <laughs> doing extraordinary things from grassroots movements to global initiatives. Our guests are the change makers who challenge the status, status quo and drive progress. They are, you are, advocates for change. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome, Carolyn.